This program is sponsored by BPL Happy Little Things. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Goa Ahead. And the issue that we are discussing this week is a very interesting one. And that is new faces, young faces, educated faces joining Goa's politics. There have been more parties in the fray and more faces in the fray. But can Goa's politics, that's synonymous with defections and corruption, see a change after this? Or this will just be new faces joining politics and becoming just like the others? And I have a very eminent and very fresh panel with me in the studio. Four of them who, who signify this change in Goan politics, this generational shift in Goan politics. But whether this generational shift will lead to the shift in principles and values that Goan politics is known for all this while. Four panelists with me. I have first with person who has become the media face of Goa BJP, Giriraj Pai Vernekar. Giriraj, welcome. Next, I have advocate and a person who joined Aam Aadmi party and trying to bring a new lease of life in the party, advocate Amit Palekar. Amit, welcome. On my left, I have a very interesting personality, president of South Goa Bar Association, Antonio Clovis Costa, who has joined Trinamool Congress. And last but not the least, I have Joel Andrad, who is a very, very young and energetic face of the Congress party. Giriraj, I will start with you. Uh, do you see a change happening or do you see this is more parties, so more options? See, I think one of the, you know, before I go on to the political landscape in Goa, I think I would also like to state why BJP, you know, is where I kind of, you know, get drawn towards. I mean, when I was a young kid, Manor Parikar ji was just growing in stature. And then, you know, when I was 16, he became the chief minister. So I think BJP is a party that has always given young leaders, fresh leaders. And that is where, you know, I mean, when we talk about upholding democracy, democracy in a country, I think BJP is a party that does it both internally as well as externally. So, you know, I mean, I was just looking at some of the chief ministers that BJP has given. I mean, Mr. Parikar himself became chief minister at the age of 44. We have somebody like, you know, Dr. Pramod Savant who became at the age of 45, 46. We had Devendra Fadnavis becoming a CM at 44. Yogi Adityanath, I mean, even, even today he's just 49 and became CM at 46. We had we have Tripura CM who became CM at 47. So I think there is a shift happening between you know within the Indian politics and this fresh faces. Is it merely a generational shift or a shift in values and principles? I think it is both. You know because with with young chief ministers like best example is in Goa. You know I mean when we saw Mr. Manohar Parikar coming in 2000, I think that was a watershed moment in Goan politics and politics has never been the same again. I think in Goa, Manohar Parikar ji was the first person who made governance the center point and not just, you know, the promises of some social engineering or something like that. So governance for the first time came on at the forefront when a young and dynamic chief minister like Manohar Parikar okay. took the center stage. Uh, Amit, why Aam Aadmi Party? I mean, um, if you if you have heard Giriraj, uh, I, I, you mean you can have a new cock for the same bottle with old wine which has been rotating in Goa, you see that Goa has been a center stage of defections. Goa is an encyclopedia for defections. Goan politicians who are part of current BJP can actually take tuition classes for the rest of the country to understand how defection can be done and very well crafted. How a party protects defectors, keeping the sword on their head so that they don't uh, go back to where they belong or maybe go outside of their domain where they are right now. So, uh, I, I mean, what do you need in that kind of a thing? You need some progress. You need some young faces. The driving force has been a, uh, the progress-driven uh, uh, governance, which we've seen in Delhi. We don't see that in Goa. We have seen uh, last 10 years of governance of BJP, I do, except for the roads, maybe infrastructure. People of Goa have not grown. And who is promising growth is Aam Aadmi Party. And the only choice that was left to me was Aam Aadmi Party, in spite of the fact that, that I also belonged to Bhatia Janta Party family before that. Hmm. Uh, Antonio Clovis de Costa, uh, you made a very interesting choice, uh, unusual choice, surprising choice for all of us, Trinamool Congress. And that too, you took the first flight to Kolkata and joined them. Why? 
<laughs> in fact, uh, uh, promote the f that was not the first flight I took to Calcutta. I had taken a flight 10 days prior to my joining to Calcutta mm. because we were called by the, TMC, uh, by the TMC leadership. They recognized our efforts during the COVID uh, struggle. They said, we want clean faces, we want youngsters into the party. And therefore, we were called 10 days be before. I think I had gone to Calcutta on the 19th of September where we met the le leadership. They promised us that they were going to give us young faces and therefore, I uh, decided to join the TMC. If you look at it nationally, it is only the TMC which is a strong alternative to the BJP. In the last two general elections from 2014 and 2019, the Congress has failed. And therefore, it, uh, at the moment, it is only the TMC which can give a strong alternative nationally to the BJP. Uh, what was the inclusion? Well, there are so many parties, but you chose TMC. What was the decision point? What was the decisive moment where you decided that I'm going for a completely new option than the available ones? Because if, as I said, uh, Pramod, nationally, it is going to be uh, uh, Modi versus uh, Mamta Banerjee. And because the Congress has failed us, you see all these years, the people of Goa have given the Congress a chance. But the Congress has failed us time and again. You see from, uh, from 99, people have been giving the Congress uh, the mandate to form government, but they surrendered it to the BJP. Then again in 2017, the mandate was given to the Congress to form government. They surrendered it to the BJP. Uh, 12 out of uh, 17 of the Congress MLAs have already gone into the BJP. 187 of the Congress MLAs nationally have gone into the BJP. So it looks like there is some sort of an understanding between the Congress and the BJP. Where the, where you Very go. interesting. But you are saying it is not only Goa scenario that prompted you. It's the national, national scenario and the bigger picture as well. And on that Definitely. point, I go to joy. Everybody is bashing Congress here, Joel. How do you respond to that and why you still feel that Congress is the best bet? Prabhupada, you should see what Congress has given India. We talk about the IT industry, telecom industry. Rajiv Gandhi was the one who led the revolution. You are talking about youngsters in politics. Rajiv Gandhi is the one who reduce the voting age from 21 to 18. We talk about local governance. The Panchayati Raj was started under the leadership of Rajiv Gandhi. So I think moving forward, Congress looks like the best bet for Goa and India. Everyone is saying that Congress is not uh, prepared enough to take on a f formidable BJP and an election juggernaut the way BJP has become. Do you, how do you respond to that? I think that's a false narrative set by the ruling dispension. Hmm. Giriraj, one interesting point is whether this new blood in Goan politics will lead to new ideas and new shifts. Because what Goan politics is synonymous with is defection, corruption, uh, absolute absence of values and politicians feeling that they can get away with anything. Do you think this change, this shift, whether irrespective of the parties I am saying, it may be you, Amit, uh, Antonio, Joel, this fresh blood, can this fresh blood brought, bring some change or clean at least a certain areas or aspects of Goan politics? Do you see that or you feel that our politics has become so complicated? Uh, advocate Radharao Grasses always says that the problem with go Goan politics is that we have dishonest voters. And when you have dishonest voters, you cannot expect honest leaders. Or do you think that's the problem, that you all of you eventually will be a part of that dishonest system? See, I think uh, since you quoted uh, Mr. Radharao Gracias, I think the problem with him is he sees whether the you know voters are honest or non-honest based on how they vote. So if they vote for the <laughs> BJP, they are not honest. But if they vote for somebody he likes, possibly they are honest. And mm. I think it's a very unfair assessment because in the temple of democracy, when you go for you know elections, I think people are the sole determ determinants of who they want to vote for. Now, one thing I really want to urge people of Goa that you know, irrespective of which political side you take, I think you should give a very clear and decisive mandate. Mm. So defections happen. Now, like in, 20, in 2012, Goa gave a very decisive mandate to the BJP, and what you saw, there were no defections in that year. So what I'm all I'm asking is, with the fresh blood coming in today, no longer the youth of Goa wants to sit on sidelines, and. Even if there are issues within the party or outside, they are very vocal about it today. And as I said, you know, BJP, what, what attracts people like me, like somebody like a Prime Minister Modi today, you know, rises from being a Bal Swayam Sevak to go on to become the Prime Minister. And today, you know, 
we may still say that BJP has a certain degree of high command, but even the today's high command possibly doesn't know who the next high command will be. But that does not seem to be the case in any of the parties today. You know, BJP strictly follows a one person, one position. You know, AAP has Kejriwal holding two positions. The TMC, I mean, less said the better. And Congress, you know, I'm, apart from all the things that uh, Joel mentioned, Congress has also given us Rahul Gandhi. And I think we cannot forget that. The only party that works relentlessly with a, uh, you know, nation first ideology. And it, 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 they, they always say that, you know, Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas. I think BJP is a party that takes everybody along and with the more youth coming in, I think we are also looking at a cleaner govern politics. I mean, same question. Can you, do you feel you can change certain aspects and or clean up certain aspects of govern politics or eventually everybody becomes part of the same dishonest system? See, I, I, I disagree with the fact that you call it a dishonest system. It's okay. the politicians who have made this system dishonest. You are talking about voters being dishonest? No. What they are looking for is a, a, a progressive government, a progress in the constituency. When they, when you fail to get that delivered to them, what you, what you become is that no, I'll take a benefit that I will achieve for time being. It's a temporary adjustment of benefits that they want to derive. Now, if you promise them a clean governance, you promise them clean development, you promise them sustainable development which Goa needs, then why should they become dishonest? So it's the politicians who are to be blamed. Now you're talking about, you know, uh, the way the government has been functioning right now. I think um, you are talking about cleaning politics. Yes, we are here to clean politics. And as I, as I said while joining uh, uh, Aam Aadmi Party, that I am here to clean the political uh, dishonesty that is there. And if we can make that effort single-handedly and start from us, we can always do that. Now let us talk about uh, what Mr. Giraj has said about uh, how uh, Mr. Kejriwal is holding two positions. In 10 days within this party, I have realized one fact that you are, they are approachable. They have delegated their powers to the, to the lo lower uh, persons who are working in the party. You can talk to them directly by lifting your phone, tell them your problems, what do you, what do you want to do and what do you want to achieve. And they are ready to listen and change. Where is that change we are seeing? Where is the progress or Vikas? Vikas is still born. For the last 10 years, we can't see, we do not see. As I always say, infrastructure, which you can see, is progress? No. Progress means all-round development of the middle class, of the lower strata, of the industries. What is happening in Goa? Why you the industries the, are leaving Goa? Fresh blood, fresh ideas can bring about that change. Great change can come in with fresh blood and fresh ideas, not with the same wine or old wine in, this, uh, in the new bottle or with the new cock, as they say, is the leader of, of, of uh, the same old blood, which has defected. Yeah. Now, I understand one more part of it, how BJP is functioning, is that you don't get absolute majority, poach. So, you are, what, what, are, what signals are you sending? Don't talk about honesty. When you have not been honest to the voters, your, your uh, well, current... What are you saying? <laughs> in 2012, BJP was given stability. In 2017, they manufactured stability. Absolutely. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they, were not, uh, they were not given majority. They did not have mandate of the people. They purchased the commodities which are available in terms of the MLAs. And same ones you are putting up against as your faces, saying that it's, it's, a, it's the new BJP. I'm sorry we cannot relate to that BJP because I remember 20 years back what BJP is and 20 years hence well, what BJP is because, because Giraj also started with that 20 years and Parikar era. I'll go to go, go, I'll go to go on that point. Can you later. survive on legacy forever? Okay, I'll, I, can you can you survive on legacy? I'll go to that later. Antonio closed the question. Very interesting, but there are two narratives in as far as your journey is concerned. One, you feel that Mamta is the most formidable opponent to Narendra Modi. The second is about bringing change. Do you think, in a small manner but a significant manner, people like you will be able to bring? systemic change as far as Goan politics or polity is concerned? Definitely, Pramod. I think that you see 65% uh, of our population in India is uh, below the age of 35. And if you see the representation for this 65% uh, of the population is only 13%. Now, uh, definitely more representation has to be given to the youth. Uh, because youth come out with fresh ideas, they, uh, they think out of the box, they got more zeal for better betterment of society. Now, you, you take our example only. In fact, when the COVID situation happened, we got a letter from the Goa Association of Residence Doctors, which was out in social media. Immediately on reading the letter, within three days, we filed a petition in the High Court. Mm. After we filed the petition, whatever mismanagement was being done with regards to oxygen was stabilized. In that petition, even my friend uh, Amit uh, Palikar, he also intervened in the, uh, in the petition yes. in the Honorable High Court. He was also there on the side. We cannot take that away. But uh, all said and done, it is the youngsters who approach the court. 
It is because the youngsters have more energy, more zeal uh, for the betterment of society. And since we are 65% of the population, I think better representation has to be given to youngsters and youngsters have to come out. See, I'll make it very clear in the, in the studio, uh, Pramod, that I have joined this party, TMC, unconditionally. Mm. I've told them very clearly that I'm here to build the party. Elections are still four months away. First, we have to build an organization. So I appeal to all the youth, please come out, get into a party, work for the party, do not sit on the sidelines. See, we are fed up of the sideline. We yes, will be see, choose whichever party you want, but, but, but get, get, get actively involved exactly. in the political process. And that's when you'll get clean candidates. You can question, your, you, we require educated people, we require educated youth to come out, question the leaders. Today, we sit on, in, the, in the comfort of our living room, type on social media, that's not it. We have to come out on the ground. And that's when I decided. See, for us also, we had a very comfortable life. Hmm. But today, we have taken a risk. Okay. Very interesting. Joy Andhra, uh, can we expect a thing like that from Congress? Because there are always so many lobbies and so many circles within circle in the Congress party that when it comes to ticket distribution, uh, all these big talks about giving fresh faces and new faces falls apart. Pramod, my initial assessment with Chidambaram coming to Goa as our senior election observer is that, yes, they are interested in giving fresh faces. Mm. And a very strong opinion of mine is, across part party lines, educated youngsters have to enter the system. It is only then that Goa and India will see a good You are saying ac across political spectrum, be a should, part of a political process. Let there be health, healthy competition, hmm. but finally educated people have to come and join the system. It's very interesting. Now, uh, uh, you mentioned about, uh, Antonio, you mentioned about the COVID fight also. Yours, you and Amit Palekar became practically the face of that COVID fight in the High Court. And Giriraj is there, Joel is there. And there are too many parties. And Giriraj said, give a clear and decisive mandate, only then a in a state like Goa, stability can be ensured. Giriraj, I'll start with you, with so many parties in the fray. Uh, do you think a very clear and decisive mandate is kind of a utopian idea right now? See, if you ask me, I think, uh, you know, BJP, as I said, which has a nation-first ideology, today doesn't seem to have too much competition in within their vote share, mm -hmm. you know. And another aspect which you know which uh, other parties keep harping on saying that BJP did not have the mandate. I know ultimately what matters are the numbers but BJP had 32.8% vote share last time which was highest you know compared to all other parties. I mean Congress I think had some 28 point something. So it is not that BJP is unpopular, BJP retained its vote share from 2012, but somehow the seats did not add up. Mm. And today, you know, when we are talking about fresh faces, I mean, Advocate Amit spoke about it, but today, because two of their biggest acquisitions are Mahadev Naik and Dayanand Narvekar. I mean, if these are your non-corrupt and fresh faces, then, you know, I wish them all the very best. And as far as, you know, stability and young faces is concerned, I think BJP is led by a very decisive and a clear leader, both as far as the party is concerned as well as the government. Mm. So I think as far as the leadership is concerned, there is no problem. There is clarity of message and while they are all, you know, still in the process of uh, getting people from uh, parties left, right and centre, BJP is already at the doorstep of people. Amit, again, that Covid fight, you, are on, you and uh, Antonio were on the same side. Today you are on two different sides. So don't you think that that signifies the split that we are talking yes, about? Certainly. That when it came to a cause, you were together. But when it comes to politics, you are on different sides. That's so don't you think that split is going to percolate down as far as the electorate is concerned? That's precisely the point I want to make. When mm. it comes to politics, you may have different ideologies. When it comes to progress, when it comes to your people, you must come together. Irrespective of your political affiliations, your ideology, whatever who that you hold. people vote? Ultimately, no. it's the vote. <laughs> See, I, I, I mean, people of Goa are smart. When COVID pandemic was on, when the whole, go, whole of Goa was fighting for uh, in a life and death situation, at that point of time, Bharatiya Janata Party's uh, uh, health minister and chief minister were playing politics and politics. So somebody had to intervene there to, to stop that, no, uh, the that point political is, fight. Amit, the point is, where do you think will be the consolidation? Because Giriraj, and he is consistently making this point. See, he I, says, I, our vote share is intact. 
people your, your vote share is divided see if you if you see the mood of goa that you, you even in our survey you have seen that people 65% nearly 60 65% of people are looking for an alternative now it is for them to choose i am sure the opposition will have to align somewhere to to fight uh, the 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 imaginary vote share that bjp is right now harping upon it cannot be like you you, you are you are talking about uh, fresh faces but don't you think uh, people like you on the one side antonio on the other side the split that we are talking about is very much evident do you think there will be a consolidation towards any one alternative maybe maybe we do not know that we are at least 100 or 100 odd days away from the elections okay. so it's it's too early to say but i when we are talking about fresh faces yeah. now if you look at giriraj he is a smart face why can't he be the candidate for panjim hmm. I, would love, I, I, I asked that question. For I asked that question. <laughs> you know, so when we are talking about but fresh very faces, frankly, when I'm when I'm uh, holding this panel discussion, looking at all of you, and I am confused whom to vote. So <laughs> I think that's the that's the confusion in the minds of the voter also. Uh, Dunyo, uh, again, same question. You and Amit were on the same side. Uh, politically, right now, you are on two different sides. So when it comes to an anti BJP vote share, don't you think uh, the choices that you guys have made, or probably many other youngsters would make? Uh, the more you guys choose different options, the wider the split. Yes, uh, Pramod, I feel that the anti-BJP vote will definitely consolidate and uh, go towards the TMC. Because if you see, as I said, nationally it is Modi versus Mamta Banerjee. Now you look at the Congress. The Congress was there. The people are fed up. They don't trust the Congress because the people had given the mandate to the Congress. The Congress betrayed them. Not only in Goa. They betrayed them in Karnataka. They betrayed them in... Uh, uh, Manipur, Arunachal Pradesh, and from Madhya Pradesh. So about five to six states, the Congress has betrayed the mandate of the people, so the people don't trust the Congress. Mm. The AAP has been in Goa for the last seven years. To some extent, they have not made, managed to make much of a dent in, the, in Goa. Now you look at the TMC. The TMC is here in Goa, not even for, 20, to be precise, I think 26 days since we have joined the party. We were the founder members who joined the TMC. In 26 days, you see the chatter that's there among the people. Mm. People are looking at the Trinamool uh, as the TMC as a new hope, the new dawn. And, uh, and therefore, I feel that the, the anti-BJP vote, which is I think about 68% as uh, said by Giriraj, will all consolidate towards uh, uh, the You're TMC. saying there won't be a split. There will be consolidation and, uh, 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 towards no, any alternative. Definitely. And I'll give you an example. Yeah. Now, in, the, in West Bengal also, there were talks that uh, the, the, the TMC should, uh, should have an alliance with the Congress and the left and with the other regional parties. But the TMC went alone. And then there was, there was speculation that, you know, the anti-BJP vote will get split, will get split. You know how much the alliance got, how many seats the alliance won out of 294 seats? They won zero seats or one seat. They lost their deposit in 292 seats. And the TMC not only bettered the, the, 2000, the, the previous uh, the thing, they, they bettered it. They, they got better vote share than what they got in the previous uh, two elections. Mm. So therefore, I feel the same is going to happen in uh, Goa because people You're see... You are saying there won't the be split, people will consolidate... Consolidate towards yeah. the... Uh, okay, very, very interesting. Joel, what do you feel? You, Congress party consistently says that we are the principal opposition to the BJP. But looking at this panel itself, people have so many options. What if everybody starts voting their own choice? And the split eventually benefits the BJP. See, Pramod, you have to understand that only two parties can form the government in Goa. It's either Congress or BJP. All your other smaller parties, be it Goa Forward, TMC, Aam Admi, there will be a lot of other parties also that will want to come. They are very marginal players. Hmm. So I think people have become smart now and they are going to do what is... You are saying people are not going to split their vote. Absolutely. Very interesting. Final words, Giriraj. Uh, we look at you guys, we feel that we need faces like this in the assembly. But I have a very, very practical question. Most of the times we feel that a good candidate is unelectable and an electable one is not good. Can, can this jinx be broken? See, I think there is a saying that, you know, people get the government they deserve. Mm. And, uh, you know, and so in... In, in a democracy, people get the vote, they, you know, get the government that they vote for. So I think ultimately it's the people's mandate. And as far as possible, I mean, you know, as a young person in the political field, I will, of course, urge the voters that, you know, you should vote for cleaner candidates, vote for younger candidates, and let's bring about a change. Hmm. I think the key to cleaner politics lies with the voters and not with the political parties because political parties will try and blend in the way what the people are asking for. All I am asking people for is, you know, if you want stability, if you want a 
government which is a double engine growth where you know central government and state government works in tandem rather than you know what you see in bengal or delhi where you know there is a constant fight to you know to, to kind of okay. stand up to the central way. government okay. so i think vote for double engine growth and people should vote for stability and people should vote for bjp amit electable good good unelectable <laughs> see you have to be the change that you want to see hmm. if you are going to uh, be convic i mean you are, if you have a holding of strong conviction or no, there cannot be a change that is always going to be a non electable person who will lose or or rather people would vote for somebody who would just a face i think that change has is inevitable we can see it coming up and when we are talking about nation first as mr giraj has said that you know uh, uh, modi believes in nation first then you do not do not uh, Uh, support the states which in, in which you have no governance like in maharashtra you know how they are made to suffer mm -hmm. then it is not nation first they are part of us we are a democratic country when we are talking about this double engine why can't you be the engine or why can't we you be the progressive engine of that state which ultimately takes the nation forward okay. nation high very very interesting point antonio what is the same question uh, we always feel that a good is unelectable and a electable is not good as uh, girira said it's the people get the government they deserve but i feel that this time the voter is smart and the voter is going to vote for a party which gives good candidates and uh, make sure that they reach the assembly because you see we require good legislators mm -hmm. you see the type of legislations that are being uh, brought uh, today mm -hmm. you see the bhumiputra what is that bhumiputra was it even discussed in the assembly and even if it was discussed can we have a legislation passed uh, by our assembly it's a shame for all goan today that a uh, legislation like the bhumiputra was passed in, in the assembly and therefore i feel the people of goa are just waiting uh, for the elections and they will vote for good and clean candidates uh, joel congress i think the one thing nobody doubts is whether congress is electable but the point is whether congress will give good candidates See, bro. Promote the change begins with you and me. So, if I may quote Mahatma Gandhi, he had said, "Be the change you want to see, and in a gentle way, we can change the world." So, I think I, we can start in I Goa. I absolutely hope so, and I end on that note. A uh, very important point is we, we as Goans, as electorate, we need to understand what kind of people we want to see in the assembly, and what kind of legislations we. want to see coming out of our assembly it is not only donations that are given for tournaments and narkasur competitions i think um, elections and politics and political discourse needs to go much much beyond it and as citizens we need to i think focus upon one simple point what kind of people we want to see in our legislative assembly giriraj amit antonio clovis da costa joel thanks a lot for joining me on this panel keep watching go ahead This program was sponsored by PPL Happy Little Things